Welcome to the Power of Purpose Africa with me, Anton NM. It's an exciting edition. We're starting a new series on the church on the crossroad. And today I'm joined by the acting general secretary of Council of Churches in Namibia. Now, it is a privilege and a pleasure to have my senior, my elder among us. And I want you to join us to understand as we unpack the issues concerning the church and how uh, we can move forward together. Sir, you're welcome. Thank you. How, how would I describe you in a very short way? My dear, I don't know how you can describe <laughs> me in a very short way. Yes. I just see myself just as a servant yes. of God. We, we, we have argued over the years. Uh, uh, most of us, we believe you have a calling to be a pastor and you don't feel like... Ah, uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't see myself in such a role. But, but the, the job you have been doing in the body of Christ, it's more than the pastoral job. I, th I think maybe we have defined now what is pastoral job and what is the non-pastoral job. Because <laughs> I think when we are called to go and make disciples, mm -hmm. it was not for pastors yes. or maybe it was for everyone yes. who is his follower. So now it seems it's only pastors that are supposed to be doing that. Yeah, you know, certain job we give it to them and say they are pastors. That's why they have to do that. And mm. So you, you have been uh, in the body of Christ as us growing up as children. And many of our viewers have watched you guide us and many, many uh, faith leaders today since they were young to now. Starting from Scripture Union uh, and now you... You have been part of Council of Churches for a while. What would you describe the state of the church at the moment? My friend, when I was thinking about this question, I was wondering, mm -hmm. I, 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 I rephrase the question to myself and say, what is it the church of today is going to give over to the next generation? Yes. Which they can carry forth. Yeah. Because... Looking to today, mm -hmm. it seems like the church have become directionless. Mm. The church have become purposeless. Yeah. It seems like we have we have left or mess the purpose of the owner of the church and we have created our own churches, having our own agendas. Yeah. So for me, it's like church, as you say, find itself at the crossroad mm -hmm. and the generation who's supposed to take over from us in a state of confusion. Yeah. Say, is this the church? Is that the church? Is it how the church is supposed to be? Mm -hmm. So when I look back, what I say, what is it what we are going to give over yeah. to the next generation? Exactly. So I see like church find itself where it's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Whether it was forced by changes and norms and other lifestyles mm -hmm. or not, it seems like we have created our own church to fit our own comfort, mm -hmm. to fit our own understanding. Yeah. And that's, that's how I see the church today. Mm -hmm. And my worry is what is it what we are basically giving over yeah. to the next generation? Having said that, when you look at uh, the, the moral decay and uh, the church becoming more material, materialistic driven, because uh, people now say the only time we consider you blessed is when you have a big car, a big house, and a big bank account. And then attaching to that is the, the moral decay. What is the gap? Yeah. You know, if the church stopped preaching and teaching about holiness, yes. first, in the church, mm -hmm. if that is not happening, yeah. Then it's obvious that there is a moral decay in the houses, mm -hmm. in the community, yeah. and in the nation. Mm. Because the starting point to influence homes, society, communities, and nation yeah. is in the church. 
Mm-hmm. And that starts with issues like holiness. Yeah. Holy reverence towards God. Mm. Now, if we are not emphasizing this, and our church we have created is about materialism, mm. to say, I see, oh, what you are driving, mm. brother, you are blessed. Mm. In the meantime, you you don't know that it doesn't belong even to the brother, it belongs to the bank. To the bank, <laughs> yes. Brother, that's why you see he will cut on the tithe. Mm. <laughs> because he still need to pay the bank or <clears throat> those kind of things. So I think our, our overemphasizing of blessings connected to material things, mm-hmm. I think we missed the point. And that's why when we talk about moral decay, yes, we cannot point fingers to the outside. Yeah, We need to point fingers to ourselves yeah. and say, Where is that teaching about holiness? Mm -hmm. Where is that teaching about to be pure in my thoughts, pure in my heart, pure in my mind, that even if I'm uh, having a deal with you, we are negotiating a business deal, that my moral understanding of fear of God is so, the consciousness of that is so strong in me that I don't want to crook you. Yes. I want this thing to happen in such a way that God will be honored. Yeah. And this is where I see that when we see moral decay and things, corruption and, uh, you know, gender-based violence mm-hmm. and, you know, children rebellion, disobeying and things outside, for me it's reflecting mm-hmm. the church. Yeah. Because why I say that is the church supposed to be the, the salt yeah. and the light. Mm-hmm. The church supposed to to influence mm. people's minds, people's behavior, people's lives. But if that is not happening, mm. so this is the indication to say mm. something is wrong in the church. Yeah. Because I see the church as a custodian of... Uh, the morality. Morality, yes. In the home, mm-hmm. in the community, yes, and within the nation. Mm. Yeah, that's how I... Now, I in, in your times, when you were uh, leading scripture, you know, and, and in your time of your generation, discipleship was the key to grooming a Christian to become responsible. Do you have discipleship in churches today? Yeah, my friend, I think, as you say, discipleship, I think it, it is it is no more emphasized. Mm-hmm. I think what I see today is that I want to recruit people from my church. Yeah. That's why even those who say they are born again or they, have, they are believers, mm-hmm. the soundness and the depth of their faith is not there. Yeah because they were not discipled. Mm-hmm. They say, I have accepted Christ. Mm-hmm. But then you see the lifestyle of the person out there. Mm-hmm. And then you see that there was no discipling. Mm-hmm. There was just lit there, and then you have to attend the programs of the church. So I think it has become a recruitment agency <laughs> for, <laughs> my, for my church. Age. It's about numbers and not souls. Yeah, because numbers talk figures and figures mm. talk about the bank account. Yeah. Uh, income. Mm. So there are certain things I think we have missed place. Yeah. That's why those even who become, uh, you know, born again or accept Christ today, mm-hmm. there is not that love and the passion and the hunger for wanting to know more about God. There is not that awareness to say, I must share this with someone. Mm-hmm. I don't want that person to die without hearing this. Yeah. You know, this whole awareness of eternity. Eternity, yes. To say, if that person die, mm-hmm. he will lose eternity. Yeah. And that is forever. Mm-hmm. So I must share this good news. Mm-hmm. You know, that excitement, that passion, mm-hmm. you don't find it. The only thing you find is that that person is now have to attend the programs in the church. Mm. 
So he's not discipled. Yeah. We see even from scripture how Jesus disciple his followers. His followers. They they see him, they hear him, he mm. lived with them, they, he was teaching them how they're supposed to do and what, everything. Mm -hmm. And this is not happening. What yeah. we see is that now from now, you are a child of God. Mm. So the next thing we teach you, so you are not baptized. Mm. Okay. We need to baptize you. We go for baptism. Yeah, the next thing is, you know, tithing. Mm. This is how we need to give and what, 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 what. You know, the things we are teaching them. Yeah. Is things for our own interest. Interest. Then teaching things for what Jesus died for. Mm. So that this person can grow, be rooted and established in the truth of God. Now, my elder, there is a saying in the Bible that uh, if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. So if you have a blind leader, who doesn't understand what you just say? And this Christian is following this spiritually blind man. I always say uh, to people that it's deadly to be led by a passionate, ignorant man. Because you might be driven by charisma and there is no character in it. So who do you blame in the two when the, the Bible says the blind both the blind, uh, if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. Now, it, it's true. Yes. It's true. There is the blind mm -hmm. leading the blind. A blind. Yeah. And there's those one who was not blind mm -hmm. ending up becoming blind. blind. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice one. Like yeah. The scriptures say you started well off uh -huh. in the spirit. Yes. And now you have become carnal. Carnal. And you are doing things totally to fit and please the, the flesh. The flesh. And that is where you find churches and leaders who started off well. Mm -hmm. But along the way, they mm. started to move away from the centrality of Christ yeah. to other things. Mm. And then their followers automatically... Yeah will follow what he emphasizes, yeah. what he say. Mm -hmm. So it is equal to the blind who are leading the blind. The blind. I think a blind by nature starting to lead the blind, both of you are blind mm -hmm. because you were blind mm -hmm. and you, the Bible say you were dead in your transgressions. transgressions. And now here I come and say, come, mm -hmm. let's go. Yeah. So I think you are the one to lead me to, to where it's light or what, but mm -hmm. in the meantime, I will not see. Yes. But those who were starting off right mm. and along the way start to move away. Yes. Start to emphasize other things. Mm. I think there, there is a big problem. Yes. And the other thing is, you see, charisma. Mm -hmm. Charisma talking and, you know, when you have that... Uh, Passion talking, passion. Mm -hmm. and you as a listener, mm. you are not like the Bereans, yes. who were very, how did you say? They were noble. They were noble. Like we say they were people of noble yeah. character. Mm -hmm. They were listening to Paul mm. and then go and take search the scriptures yes. to say, Is what you are saying? Is it right? Yes. So, if that's why the blame can be also on the follower. Mm -hmm. If you are blind and you follow the blind person, it's because you have switched off and you say, whatever you say mm -hmm. is true. Mm. So it snakes, mm. bring it so that it drink petrol. Uh -huh. Do you know those kind of Yeah, things? yes, yes. And say, sister, uh -huh. now I'm, that is because God has given everyone common sense. Yeah. And the spirit of God is in everyone. Mm -hmm. That's why you know that. No, this is wrong. Yeah. Even if I don't go to church and now you say, my sister, I'm a man of God. I marry you already in heaven. Let's go and sleep. To, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, yes, yes. That's why I say we cannot only bl blame the leader. The leader. Because 
we can also blame the follower because as a follower mm -hmm. and say, let me go and read what the scripture is saying. Thank yes. Now you see those are leaders who mm. lead people for purposes. They say, this is a divine revelation you will not find in the scripture. <laughs> or they will read something uh -huh. which, and then say totally something different. Out of the context. And then they tell you, this is divine revelation. Even if you read, you will not understand. So believe what I'm saying. You see those kind of things. Yes. That's why as followers, mm -hmm. we have to be very careful. Yeah. What's a little, I said a scripture. I mean, we say people do research about all kinds of topics. Oh, yes, yes. Why don't you do the same mm -hmm. and say, how do you understand this? Listening to this person, you do almost your own search there. And, and then you see, no, but... When you say you will step on scorpions and mm -hmm. snakes, and it doesn't mean that now I have to look for a scorpion. A scorpion and, and the snakes <laughs> and step on it. And step on that one. Yeah, yes. So we cannot only blame the, the leader. The leader. Mm -hmm. We also do blame. The other is, you see those charismatic preachers, yes. people who are charismatic in their nature of talking, mm -hmm. make that people emotionally, you are... You are, you know, you are, you know, you are excited emotionally. Yeah, you become so emotionally excited that whatever he's saying, you say amen and you believe and mm. you are in that vibe of yeah. that emotional Emotion. talk that yes. you don't realize or think what is it, what it's say actually, you know, those kind of things. That's why it's not the charisma mm -hmm. which have the truth. Yes. It's not how I am, you know, uh, firing you up. Mm -hmm. Truth is whether I'm charismatic or not charismatic in my way of talking. Mm -hmm. Truth is just truth mm -hmm. and need to be communicated in any way. Yeah. So we cannot bl only bl uh, blame the, the leaders, the blind leaders. Mm -hmm. So also the followers have to be able to verify the scriptures. Uh, and, and then the, you see, you know the problem I see mm. in churches also, we use scripture as a reference book. Okay. So today we are going to read out of what, what, what we read, mm -hmm. and then we put it aside. And even as his followers, now this is the word of God, what he's saying. Now I want to listen. Mm -hmm. That's why you see the word of God is all now. It's only what that person is saying. Now that person was supposed to attempt to interpret the word of God through you. Yes. But that is put aside. The main thing is what he's saying. What he's saying. Mm. Now that attitude also mm -hmm. make us to be blind without common sense or saying mm. the word of God. If you are saying, and I don't see it here, it here mm. then I need to be careful. You, you are bringing me to a part where I will ask a question about theological training. Have we come to a point, now there is a debate with our charismatic people, the Pentecostal feels like you are called by the Spirit, it's not necessarily for you to go and uh, study theology uh, or to be a learned man. You know, I was reading uh, this, this month, I'm reading the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And I see Daniel quoting the prophet Isaiah, mm -hmm. about the desolation of Jerusalem yes. and Moses. Mm -hmm. And I was asking, I say, okay, so Daniel, mm -hmm. study mm -hmm. about all these the other prophets, yes. about Moses, Moses, the law of Moses, Moses, because he's quoting the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus yeah. is quoting the Old Testament. The Old Testament. So how will you quote Mm -hmm. scripture if you don't know it yes so that that teach me that you know if there is no knowledge mm -hmm. if you reject knowledge mm. god will <laughs> reject you god will reject you you see and even say even your children i shall also reject you see because you can't give what you don't and have that's why he say my people perish mm. of lack of knowledge. knowledge now knowledge how do we define knowledge how do we acquire knowledge mm -hmm. Knowledge is something you acquire. Yes. 
And now, because I know those people say that the, the spirit, the letter killeth, mm -hmm. the spirit giveth give life. life. And then they want to apply that in terms of, now there is no need for me to go to Bible school. Mm. And that is not how it's supposed to be. Yes. That's why even Jesus, when he took the book and opened and read and say, mm. it was, this is talking about me. me. Yes. It's knowledge. Yes. The, 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 the spirit mm -hmm. opened up the revelation. Yes of the truth of God mm -hmm. for us to better understand and to put faith in it. Yes. Then just because there are two opposites, you see, mm -hmm. there are those who say so, and there are those who the knowledge is more only academic head knowledge mm -hmm. about scripture. Yes. And it's empty, dry and dead. Mm. That you find that extreme that they have all the knowledge about theology. Mm -hmm. They even have PhDs. Yeah. But it is a head knowledge, academic right. knowledge, which I will call that it's dead and empty. Yes. And there are those extremes who say, I don't need to go to Bible school. I don't need to, because the Spirit it's... already teach me and give me what to say and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So we have those kind of... Uh, two extremes. Two extremes. And mm -hmm. both extremes for mm -hmm. me... It's all, it's the same. It's the same, yes. It's, this one, the emphasis was, I went to academic, uh, uh, what? Theological institutions, mm -hmm. and I I have had knowledge. Yes. I know the whole history of mm -hmm. the Old Testament, and I have done what uh, things there. Mm -hmm. And then you find the other extreme. Yeah. And I see the both of the extremes. Yes. Lead to emptiness mm -hmm. because these two knowledge and the spirit of god go together Amen. because who give knowledge mm. it's god god it's not out of somewhere yes and i believe the spirit bring revelation in this knowledge in this knowledge and the spirit mm. is through this knowledge mm. bring that changing power in people who are hearing yes so we cannot separate the two. I think you are, you are very, very uh, on point because uh, John 4.24, for the Lord seeketh they that shall worship him in spirit and truth. So they, 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 they are inseparable. Yeah. They, for, for change and transformation to happen, there must be truth and spirit. And truth is the knowledge. Is the knowledge. Yeah. Yes. And the spirit is the Holy Spirit of yes. God. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what you are quoting. You, you, you know, uh, again in the same John 1, uh, first John, uh, John chapter 1, Jesus came with truth and grace. Yeah. So you will find again the two extremes. Those who are saying everything is by the grace. Uh, they, they sin, they do all kind of evil, they are covered by the grace. <laughs> and there is no truth to it. There's no principles of truth. Uh, and then you find those that are driven just by the truth. So that is uh, another perspective of people who claim, uh, and Paul says in, in Romans 6, that shall we continue to sin because we are saved by grace? And he says no. Now, so moving forward with all this that is happening in the nation and what you have just alluded what are the institution like CCN, ACPCN, and all these bodies? And now I hear there is a, a prophetic council. I saw the other advert. There is another one that has been formed called Apostolic Council. Yeah. What, 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 how do you bring coherence, connection to what is happening in the community to the institutions? You see, we can create institutions. Mm -hmm out of ourselves. Yeah. Prophetic council, mm -hmm. apostolic what council, yeah. what, what, what. And so there are some of this institution which is man-made institutions. institutions. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you are a prophet, I'm a prophet, and say, hey, brother, don't you think we can put set up in a prophetic council mm -hmm. to do what? <laughs> that's a good question, yes. So that's why I see some of these uh, bodies. Uh -huh. Is it bodies called by God to be there? Mm. And what purpose are they serving? Yeah. 
those are the things we need to to look at. Mm -hmm. And you will see some of these uh, institutions along the way they will die out mm -hmm. because the the steam ran out. Mm -hmm. It was human make mm -hmm. thing because some people are copying other countries. Yeah, that's why. In some countries, you find these kind of umbrella bodies mm -hmm. and you see the impact and the power of that body mm -hmm. in that nation. Yeah. Then you start to know that I think God is working through this and God is in this and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So when we lose our purposes, whatever we are calling ourselves, mm -hmm. the question is, why are we there for this umbrella body, this prophetic because the thing I, I read when I read scripture is, it's about God. Yes. Now we create things about ourselves. Mm. You see, sometimes it seems like we copy the world. Yeah. You know, the world have different forums and mm. those mm. kind of things. And yeah. when you when you read the, the first church, mm -hmm. they were not having forums and prophetic councils and what, but you could see how powerful the spirit of god was working mm. through ordinary people yeah wherever they were persecuted and they go run away wherever they end up mm. already you could feel the impact and mm. the changes yeah that's why how strong it was mm. so we need to ask ourselves mm -hmm. is this man-made things or is it things called by god for a specific time and purpose or not. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that is very, very important. Like think. what you mentioned, a council of churches. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why you see in those terms, mm -hmm. one of the aims of council of churches was reconciliation. Yes. Because of historical background, mm -hmm. how we were divided and where. So they were putting their emphasis on uh, reconciliation, reconciliation and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And this is their purpose, they want to reconcile people because of uh, divided by tribalism, apartheid, and those kind and of politics things. Politics and, and all politics those. and those things. Mm -hmm. And today, what is needed today yeah. in where we are? Yes. Do we have a prophetic voice? Mm. That's a question. Uh, can, you, can you break it down when you say prophetic? Because people will think prophetic voice is actual prophet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are right, you are, really, you are right, you are yes. in, in, in a time of a prophet, so when, I mean, when you say prophetic voice, you have to define what it is. <laughs> you see, the prophetic or uh, the prophet is the messenger of God, Yes, delivering God's word mm -hmm. to the people, people, giving not my word, not what I think, but God's word yeah. to the people. Mm -hmm. Whether it's what is going to happen, coming, or whether it's about what is happening, that they have moved away and start to worship their mm. own mm -hmm. self-made God, and whether they proclaim God's judgment or warning, yeah. those are messengers, mm -hmm. but they are bringing God's word. Yeah. Not uh, to say, I see it. your breakthrough is coming, tomorrow mm. you will have a... This big what what and mm. big what what. You see, that is not that. A messenger of God is a carrier of message of God, the one who sent him. Mm -hmm. Not what I created yes. to make you to feel God. So this is what I mean that if the nation mm -hmm. have gone away from God, mm -hmm. the voice of the church is the one to to talk and to bring back. Yes. That's why you see Jeremiah's and Isaiah's and all these prophets yeah. were given a message from God to tell the nation. Mm -hmm. Now, I think our problem sometimes I say is, you know, we have personalized, we have maybe over-personalized Christ mm -hmm. that we don't have a message for the nation. Mm -hmm. We have a message to say, you must be born again. You must have a personal relationship with God, mm -hmm. which is good, supposed to be like that. Yes. But the broader message mm -hmm. for the nation, yeah. because when you read, God was punishing the nation mm -hmm. because they have 
And I was reading the prayer of Daniel because I'm going through Daniel. Yes. When he was confessing the sin. Mm -hmm. We have sinned. Yeah. My ancestors, mm. your people, mm -hmm. we, he include him. Yes. And I think this is where, when we look to uh, evangelical or evangelical churches, mm -hmm. they don't preach what we call social justice. Yes. They will preach that don't steal, mm -hmm. but they don't, they, go, they will find difficult to preach about corruption mm -hmm. as a spirit in the nation. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things. Yes. And again, it's two extre <coughs> extremes. Mm. You, you find the social gospel mm -hmm. overemphasizing social issues. Yes. And then you find the, those who are overemphasizing spirituality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like someone say, you are useless for the earth. You are only meaning for heaven. Mm. But we are here. Mm -hmm. And you find those who almost say you have arrived. This We just need to fight social justice. Mm -hmm. Again, we find these two, two extremes. extremes. Yes. And in the middle, this is where we're supposed to, to be. be. Yeah. And that is why when we say about uh, a voice of the church mm -hmm. to be heard. Yes. Because we're supposed to descend what is happening in the nation. The times, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And proclaim that. Mm -hmm. And I believe if that is happening, mm -hmm. every spiritual leader, wherever he is, start to send something like that. Mm -hmm. Even where you are in your ministry there, you send something like that. And mm -hmm. that, that's a talk. Yes. The other one is there, and also start to send something like that, mm -hmm. and that become the talk. Yes. You see? And this is where we need to bring the balance. Mm -hmm. We cannot just say there is unemployment mm. and we just pray, say, let me pray for you so that you get the job. Mm. No, as a spiritual leader, say, why is there is unemployment? Yes. Why is people hungry? Mm. Huh? Because this is our role. I was telling pastors somewhere in the Omaheke region, say, as pastors by nature, you are also community leaders. Yes. If there is injustice is going on, mm -hmm. the the mandal you are carrying gives you the authority mm. to go to any office, yeah. whether it is a governor or minister, mm -hmm. and bring these injustices to the to the authority. Yes, because there is that certain mandal of authority mm -hmm. over you. Yeah, you cannot just think. It's only in the four walls where I can now talk it. Mm -hmm. It's beyond our four walls. Yes. It's beyond our our ministry. Mm -hmm. I believe God gives you that authority, mm -hmm. which is beyond your, your four walls. Your four walls of yes. your ministry. Mm -hmm. You know. I, I think uh, you, you have tackled which was my next point. Uh, the the unity of the body of Christ and to be able to discern the time. Right now, we are kind of disintegrated. Uh, we are not, what we say, spiritual and social contemporary to the issues on the ground. As you have said, how do you become a prophetic voice to the political leaders, to the nation, and to the issues that are happening? You have mentioned there is high unemployment. Right now, the statistics that came out about 57% uh, of Namibian being in hunger. Uh, and you're looking at 1.3, 1.5 people not having food. Uh, the gender-based violence, there's an issue that is rising on, on suicide. Suicide has gone so much high. Uh, and when you look at all these issues, we are saying that the church needs to come together, begin to look at these issues so that we become contemporarily relevant because at the moment, uh, community feels as if uh, the church is become irrelevant. We are, we are not addressing from spiritual perspective, from the morality. Because you as a church, you are supposed to point the government and the community towards the direction where moral issues have to be addressed. Right now, community and people feel, where is the church? So, what will be your last words uh, to the church leaders and Christians out there? I think to the to the church leaders is, mm -hmm. 
You see, when there is a national budget review, yes. as a spiritual leader, you have responsibility. That's why the government is inviting mm-hmm. communities and leaders yes. to come and listen to the review of the budget. Yeah. And that is where, as a spiritual leader, say, no, if it's like that, where is there something for, for the people who are unemployed? Mm-hmm. This, is, this is, you see... That's an involvement. That is a mandate of a spiritual leader. Yes. To talk to authority, to be interested, to want to know mm. what is in the national budget. Yes, sir. And make contribution. Mm. That is that one. The whole issue of unity mm. and diversity. Yeah. I think we are scared by diversity, and that's why we think we cannot be united. Mm-hmm. Because diversity. Mm. In the body of Christ is good and healthy. Yes. It's like you say, you, me, we are different, mm. but we are human. Yeah. So let us not caught up in the diversity and say, because the way we I do church, mm-hmm. and the way you do church is different, so we cannot work together. Mm-hmm. No, if we know that we want to bring the gospel, we can work together. Mm-hmm. The fear we are having is maybe my members will move over to you. Mm. So I don't want, I'll lock, I'll even lock up people, Mm -hmm. you know. So you organize a retreat or conference, you want people to come. I'll say, be careful where you go and be careful the influences of others. Mm. I think if as spiritual leaders, if you know that this is Christ church, Mm -hmm. I'm just a servant. Yeah. And you believe that you are bringing the truth, whether they go or not go, mm-hmm. it's God's people. Yes. And that made me that, my brother, you have a crusade. Mm-hmm. So how can we join yeah. hands? Yes. No, I have these big speakers, which I don't use in my days that say, you know, we hold hands. Yes. And whatever come out there. Mm-hmm. But now we have, we own the things. Mm-hmm. And we want to own the people, own the things. Yeah. We're supposed to belong to God. So I think as uh, spiritual leaders, mm-hmm. we need to allow the Spirit of God to work. Amen. And if you find yourself, you are not called, mm-hmm. maybe come so that we go and look for other jobs and give to <laughs> jobs to people. And for others, mm-hmm. we are living in the times where we're supposed to be like Bereans. Yeah. Set the scripture for ourselves. Yeah. And really earnestly seeking God in your own personal Mm-hmm. and experience him there. Yes. Not only waiting mm. for the pastor. You see, it's two ways. Yes. When a pastor is preaching, mm-hmm. he has prepared the food, mm-hmm. he chew it, mm-hmm. not bring it to you. Your job is just to, <laughs> to, to swallow. You see. Uh. But it has to be also, uh. I want to prepare this food myself. Mm-hmm. I want to show it, you yeah. see, uh-huh. and then solo. Yes. And that is the importance that we say, I want to study God's word. Mm-hmm. So my, my message is, mm-hmm. Let us not be church goers, yeah. good moral people. You see, good moral people will not go to heaven. Mm-hmm. You can be good moral people, you don't fornicate, you don't mm. steal, you don't what, what, what. Mm. But there is no living relationship with the with God. Mm-hmm. So that's my 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 encouragement to say mm-hmm. as ordinary people. Yes. Let's have let's have that seeking hunger of wanting to know this Christ. Yeah. And for spiritual leaders, mm. open up. I know a lot of pastors mm. who cannot go to you to the fellow pastor and say, Brother, help me, man. My church things are not moving. Mm. And sit with the other one and the other one say, No, my brother, I think the problem is this mm. and that and that. Yeah. There is no such thing. Who speak in the lives of pastors? Mm. I wonder. Yeah. Is there someone speaking in the lives of lives of our spiritual leaders? Mm. Is there conferences mm. where spiritual leaders are going or retreats in this country? I don't know. I don't hear about this. There, there is nothing. At the moment. Except from now, we have a conference, church conference. Mm. But I don't say there is those kind of things. Yeah, which brings spiritual leaders together. Yeah, and even looking to have these spiritual leaders who can mentor Mm -hmm. other spiritual leaders. I don't know whether we have those kind of uh, 
things. Mm. Maybe they are there, but I don't hear them. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you very much, sir. There we have come to the end of uh, this broadcast. It is very important. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We are going to be discussing difficult what the church is scared to talk about. Today I was joined by the General Secretary, Acting General Secretary of Council of Churches, Mr. Rudrick Biakas. He is my father, he is my mentor. It is a blessing. And uh, looking forward to most of you. Please comment, share. Let's continue to discuss, bring together. It might be painful, but we need to come together and come at the table to discuss uh, difficult things in order to find a voice for the church in our times because we need it. Until then, God bless you. This is the church at the crossroad.